So closure. Closure is the systematic study of how we can represent that kind of feedback in terms of the mean flow. So let's just think abstractly. Here's an abstract equation for you, where you might be the zone of wind, if you like, and, and let's say that it develops according to a nonlinear equation. So du by dt is u times u, that's a quadratic term, and then there's a linear term, r times u, r is a constant. Okay, so, so that's just a kind of idealized generic equation which we're going to examine. So let's say that we take the time average of that equation. So d by dt of u bar, but u bar is not necessarily the time mean, okay, it could be some low frequency component, is equal to the average u bar of u times u and r times u bar. Trouble is, if we want to solve that equation for u bar, we don't know this term, we don't know what u times u bar is. Because it's not necessarily just u bar times u bar. That's the problem, because there's this transient part. Okay, so u, the average, or the, the bar of, of u times u is equal to u bar times u bar plus u dash u dash, the bar of that, right? So that's the term that we need to get a handle on. So let, we could, conceivably, we could say, well, let's just write an equation for this. Let's write an equation for the u u bar term. And we can do that. We can um, multiply this original equation by u. So we get an equation for u times u, right? which is a half of d by dt of u times u, plus u, 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 plus r, u, u. So there's an equation for the development of u, u bar. But the trouble is now we've got an equation for the quadratic term, but we've got a cubic term in the equation, and so it hasn't helped. And so we can do it again. You can do it again as many times as you want, right? But at some point, you're all going to have to admit that you don't know one of the terms, and you're going to have to try and find a way of representing this higher order term in terms of the, the next order down. So the n plus oneth order term, you have to represent it in terms of the nth order term. So to keep it simple, let's say we have to represent the quadratic term in, in terms of the mean flow. And that is closure. And there are various approaches to closure. And the one I've already mentioned is to talk about diffusion. If you're um, going to use a diffusive flux, if you're going to use a diffusive approach to uh, representing the systematic effect of transients in terms of the mean flow, what we're going to say is that the transients will act a bit like molecules in molecular diffusion. So you know what happens if you have, say, a metal bar which is hot at one end and cold at the other end. Molecular diffusion will transport the heat from the hot end to the cold end, and gradually the bar will come to the same temperature and that is because heat is transported down gradient, okay? So you have a gradient of temperature, and gradually the heat is transported down that gradient so that the temperature becomes uniform, right? So that's our analogy, and we say that the, our geostrophic eddies are like these molecules. They will, if there's a gradient in some larger scale um, field, then the geostrophic eddies will try to smooth out that gradient by diffusion. And so we can say that this... So we have this development equation, again the same thing, and we split this term into the advection by the time mean and the transient eddy forcing term. We're going to represent that as a diffusion, okay? So we'll say that that flux, V prime Q prime bar, the, the mean flux, the mean potential vorticity flux, is some constant minus some constant times the gradient of the mean state Q. It's going to transfer properties down gradient, smooth out gradients. So then we can take this and we can substitute it into here. We've got an equation. So here's the substantial derivative of Q bar represented in terms of Q bar. Well, this is our, this is our assumption for how the transients are going to behave. It's a, it's a parameterization or a closure. Because this K, it's a matrix and not necessarily all the terms in the matrix will be the same. Diffusion in some directions might be stronger than other directions. So, for example, we've got uh, V prime Q prime bar. It's going to have a coefficient in front of the meridional gradient, another coefficient in front of the vertical gradient, for example. Um, and these coefficients come from turbulence theory. Okay? The simplest specification for K is that it's the same in all directions, so that's isotropic. And if that's the case, then this 3 by 3 matrix, which is K, is just a diagonal matrix with 
with a uh, constant same value down the diagonal. And that is just a straightforward isotropic down gradient diffusion. The flux is just minus the constant times the gradient. But in general, you know, that down gradient flux, or that flux in the same direction as the gradient, is associated with symmetric matrices. So you have a symmetric part of the, grade, of, of the matrix. Um, the flux will be um, in the same direction as the gradient. But then you can also say that this matrix has an anti-symmetric part. So k is equal to s plus a. And if that's the case, then, then um, if you have, for example, a has a zero diagonal, and the off-diagonal elements are of opposite sign, so it's anti-symmetric, then strictly a, that matrix a times a vector, is perpendicular to that vector. So you can also have a diffusive flux, which is not up or down the gradient. It can be uh, along the gradient. So parallel to the contours of the mean state. That's also possible. And that, uh, that flux is neither up gradient nor down gradient. It's called a skew flux. Right? And a skew flux, as I said, it's, 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 it can be written as, a, as an advection term. And uh, you can assign an advecting velocity to that flux, which can be represented as a, as a stream function, even. So the stream function represents this skew flux, which does not change the gradient. It goes along the gradient. What kind of diffusion we're going to pick, what kind of diffusion we're going to use, whether it's just going to be straightforward isotropic down gradient diffusion, or whether we'll have some anti-symmetric terms in this matrix, that depends on the problem we're trying to solve. Okay, well, what kind of trace of variable we're, we're trying to parameterize the effect of transients on. So here's an example of a parameterization which is often used in ocean models. So let me just say a word about ocean models. Right? Ocean modeling is difficult. It's in, a se in a sense, it's more difficult than modeling the atmosphere. And that's because you need a lot more resolution to do it if you want to resolve the geostrophic eddies. Geostrophic eddies in the atmosphere are fairly easy to resolve because they're, they're big. The Rossby radius is 1,000 kilometers, right? So most atmospheric models now have no trouble resolving that Rossby radius scale. In the ocean, it's still an issue. It's not easy because it's only 100 kilometers. And it is possible to have an ocean model that fully resolves those, every one of those eddies. But it's, uh, it's, it's quite an expensive thing to run on a computer. So if you want to run it for a long time, then you have, we have a trade-off between how long your run can be and how much you can resolve. So let's say that we don't fully resolve these geostrophic eddies in an ocean model. Then we have to represent them some other way. And this parameterization, due to Jensen McWilliams, is one approach to doing it. So last time we talked about barricading instability. So here's a, here's a kind of cartoon of what a density surface might look like near the thermocline, and what would straightforward isotropic diffusion do to that? You'd have gradients here in the density, and they would just get rubbed out. They would get um, smoothed out, right? And that, well, the result would be that you'd have uh, a more even gradient of density in the vertical. But another way to do that, which is more in, in keeping with the mechanism of baroclinic instability, which we studied last time, is that these tilting isentropes, or these tilting density surfaces, get flattened out by advective flow and help that flow to, to evolve by transferring energy between the potential energy stored in the slope of the isentropes and kinetic energy of the growing systems, right? And so the circulation associated with that can be represented as a skew flux in a diffusion scheme. And that's what this parameterization is, uh, is all about.